Hey guys, thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the last video. It was a conversation from the Three Star Circus with Vaughn, Blondie and Steve. Well, today we've got Vaughn, Blondie and Grease Monkey. You'll notice in the middle of this, there might be some connection errors. I was doing the war recap, which is playing in the background. Just as the maintenance brake landed, this could be the mod detection update. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoy this. We explore things such as modding, who is Natus, can we meet Natus, can we get him on? We also explore solutions to modding. What could we do to eliminate modding? Not we, but Supercell. Can they actually take some action to get rid of modding forever? Anyway, guys, thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoy this. On with the show. First of all, I'm going to start off with me. I'm I'm useless tree guy. Uh, we've also got in here, which is Blondie. Who Blondie? Tell us a bit about yourself, there. Um. Well, I am uh, part of the Three Star Circus. Yeah, an integral part of the Three Star Circus, not just I'm very just here, important I'm part. I'm just here for the pop culture. You know everything about clash and what goes on in the community you're pretty you're pretty well tuned up on that i think that's fair to say then we've got um in here we've got uh, somebody that wasn't on the last one we've got greased monkey who's actually a greasy monkey uh tell us a bit about yourself <laughs> um i've been playing um clash of clans for about three years now i'd say and i've been involved in another clan before this uh, melbourne 1.0 and then melbourne 1.1 um i've been basically in the clan war community for quite a while and in the fair play community for quite a while too and it's fair to say that you're a very very good town hall nine attacker right uh, well i wouldn't say very good i'm very lucky <laughs> yeah okay and then we've got the uh new ceo of um supercell games who is vaughn tell us a bit about yourself vaughn well, I think Andy's underselling his abilities not only in the game, uh, but in but in life as well. Because, look, he he represents exactly one half of the Asian fair play community that's out there. So I think he deserves big props for you know standing in the wind on that one. But we're we're lucky to have Andy, and uh, Andy and I go way back. Uh, Andy's background is in IT as well, so I think he brings a lot of technical perspective into what may be happening behind the scenes, and I think that's what's going to really help us separate fact from fiction as we get into this conversation and understand what Supercell's really doing behind the scenes. Obviously, we've just had the massive update or non-update or whatever it was. Something happened in Supercell where there's been loads of buzz around this banning thing. What do you think of it, guys? What do you think's going on here? I think um, that... This is Supercell's way of warning us first. Um, maybe they'll give us a week or two before they actually bring down the band hammer. I'm super optimistic. I think that they're serious, that it's finally time. They're going to start seriously and banning people that are getting an unfair advantage against other players. And, you know, they even said in the rollout that it was going to take a few weeks. So everybody's kind of like feeling it out right now. But I'm optimistic. You know, to me, I thought this statement that they put out was very interestingly worded uh, because I, I first read that and I thought, well, that's really bold for a company that's basically done nothing, uh, you know, for modding over the last two years. And they came out and I think they, they engaged in a lot of puffery in their statement. And I think that leads questions uh, that, you know, Andy and I have been debating on how much of this is real versus how much of this is positioning. Because the interesting thing about security is that, you know, the psychological deterrent is actually a major factor in all of this. And and if you're out for a behavioral change, you know, the, the psychological implications of a punishment can actually be more powerful than the punishment itself. And so I think they've actually done a good job in striking fear into the hearts of people that know they're actually doing wrong and they're wanting to get away with something. And I think that they've achieved their goal of uh, behavioral change and certainly awareness around this issue and, and they've made a positive step in, ter in towards uh, their own positioning. Now they have to follow that up though or they're going to be seen as an empty threat. So I, you know, the, I'm curious now is what are they zeroing in on first from a technical perspective? Is it going to be the modified clients like iMod and XMod? Are they actually going to be going after the bot community as well? You know, when you go over things like BoostBot which is a, you know, a, a different type of technology than the iMod bot, you know, how deep are they really going to go with this or are they just trying to breathe fire on the community and then go for the low-hanging fruit i feel really privileged that we've got guys who are 
A really committed to the game. Sorry, and girls. Sorry, Blondie. That that sounded extremely sexist there. But we've got people, some lovely people who are really interested in the game and also understand the workings of it and understand the community. I think that's that's a really nice shape on 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 a good discussion that we can get out of out of what's going on here. So sorry to digress there. I think it's worth introducing people. So we're going to move on to. What's actually happening in the supercell world, supercell world, and are these uh, is this stuff coming out? Is it just empty threats? Obviously, Koopa put out that video when he was wearing a nice supercell t shirt, and he's really heavily involved in it. What did you guys think about? Did you did you first of all did you all get a chance to watch that? And if you did, what did you think of what he said? Yeah, I had a chance to look at it, and I think it's um, it's a little bit of an overreaction, especially considering um, that Reddit Trooper has just come up with that letter to the whole community. Um, exclaiming their indignity at um, Supercell's latest efforts. You, you thought it was indignant? Why? Uh, put some more color on that, Andy. Okay, well, the, um, if, if you've read the letter that uh, Reddit Trooper came out with, or at least one of their um, co-leaders probably came up with, it, it seems that they um, took modding as a, a right that they have, and, uh, more like a, uh, the only way they could play Clash of Clans at Town Hall 10 and Town Hall 11 level. They, they call it meta gaming. Yeah, that's an interesting one. And there was an interesting uh, comment on, on the Reddit thread today that likened um, the spirit of that letter to athletes who use steroids. Because a lot of you know, people, you know, athletes that would use steroids think that they're actually the purest version of the athletic, uh, of the athlete, because they're willing to do anything it takes to achieve, you know, a high level of performance. And they have a blind spot into the fact that they're either, um, you know, building rule or they're bending the rules or, you know, causing harm to themselves and the people around them. And I, when I read that letter, I took it kind of like you, I, I it was almost a, a sense of entitlement that they had that, exactly. um, that, you know, they, this is how they wanted to play the games on their terms, and they almost feel like um, they're the victims in all of this because, and and they're you know disbanding you know out of protest uh, because they're being you know forced to play the game on a certain you know set of terms that they didn't didn't get to define themselves. Exactly I mean, it's, right. it's pretty crazy. The the one thing I think Blondie would be good on this one. I mean, I don't get you know I played the game for a long time, I, but I always kept myself to myself, if you like, until I started doing the top war clan wars and stuff like that but i don't get who these clans are or or if you can can you maybe put some perspective on that just for the likes of me who are quite you know slow to the the culture of this you mean like what 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 reddit troopers is all about yeah just 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 the people that that are you know this is obviously went quite viral if you like on twitter and people totally. are really talking about it how, i mean how big are they why do they have this impact i don't get it well, I, for one, just love Koopa's tipsy videos. They're my favorite. I can really relate to him more when he's, you know, had a few, and he does this really cute thing with his hands that makes it what much more exciting <laughs> to watch, you know? So, so you Koopa's got a crush videos, on him. They're, like, top-notch. <laughs> and, um, no, he's, like, the ultimate, like, extrovert clasher, though. And I think that probably is in part of the part part of the reason he's in that clan is to bring attention to them it's like you know a star figure head type of thing like that's the way i see it is that you know he's like koopa he's tons of followers on twitch and on youtube and you know i mean clash of clans made a commercial about him so you know like the most generous player of all time so you know he's this huge figurehead he's in the clan because he brings so much attention to troopers but if you know anything about him or like watch his streams on twitch at all i mean he does most of his attacks live on stream so it's very unlikely to me that he's engaged in that activity but i mean i think that the rest of that clan is very open about using third-party software to make the most out of their attacks so i'm yeah, on the note, I remember um, reading a thread on Reddit once where Reddit Trooper, one of the co-leaders of Reddit Trooper, oh, sorry, one of the elders at that time um, was caught modding, and uh, there was a big uproar about it, and soon thereafter, nothing was done to this guy, but he was actually promoted to a co-leader. See, I, I, don't get, I don't get how these clans, you know, Koopa aside and, and whatever else goes on inside there, how they become 
so well known in communities what happens to to make these clans have such a say like i mean what what you said about them making a statement about being elite and all this jazz and how they you know vaughn then touched on well they're kind of portraying this victim what gives them the right what happens where they get elevated to that status well, I, I think, think in his video he talks about it you know he says that you know these are a group of people that he's known for a long time they've all worn together for a while and that it comes to a point where when you reach a certain level of expertise, then you start competing against harder and harder clans, and then it becomes so much pressure to get that three star for every single attack that it leads, you know, kind of naturally to people doing whatever it takes, even if it means, you know, getting an unfair advantage over their opponent. Or, you know, the way they see it maybe is that their opponent are already using an unfair advantage against them. So in order to compete, they have to also use that same advantage. Yeah, but what happens where, why do they get so famous? Why do people become interested in their clan? And why, why what they say does it have so much gravitas? I think it's just, you know, it's like any other industry. It's who is making the most noise. And, you know, those clans have, you know, well, like Koopa is in Reddit Troopers and he's streaming their wars all the time on Twitch. And, you know, a lot of these other clans have people that are in charge of them or in part of them that stream on Camcord or Twitch or have YouTube videos where they make tutorials to help people progress along in the game. I think that's the common thread that you're going to see in all the big clans that are kind of like the famous famous clans of Ash are the ones that have, you know, YouTube, Twitch, Camcord followings. Okay, I'm with you. Right, okay, let's, that's, that makes sense to me now. Okay, so we're going to move back to this point then. We're, we're, we're really talking about this, this update that Supercell's done and we got onto the Koopa thing there because he's released a video with the, you know, the Supercell t-shirt on talking about, you know, you're not in trouble if you're using third-party applications, but you will be, and they're more than likely going to detect it. Right, so we're going to talk about, first of all, I put a, a tweet out to ask. I haven't got many Twitter followers, and uh, I've got some, and I asked a question, has anybody actually been banned? And I offered a gift reward for people to send me authentic screenshots, and by authentic, I mean, I mean that they showed a photo of their village with maybe a date stamped so maybe a handwritten note to say i was banned on or or their name or something to prove it's not just a, a photoshop job and i've had nobody come forward what about you guys have you heard about anybody actually getting banned no not me so far the, all that i've heard are friends of friends yeah same with me i've i've I, I do follow the the clash of clans reddit and and there's a lot of noise on there but there's a lot of uh you know good good news that comes out in there um you know i did follow with interest on all of these clans that seem to be disbanding for one reason or another and uh they referenced reasons in there that um you know people in their clans were copying bans so um you know without having been banned myself or no one i know that's being banned you know i think that there's enough smoke there that we have to assume that some people are getting banned because getting referenced as people what why people are making let's say game altering decisions um that being said i go back to my original point you don't actually have to ban that many people you simply have to tell a good story and have just enough evidence to make it seem credible and supercell really stuck their chest out on this one i mean they really took a a a, a, a really strong stance and you know i kind of there's an analogy of look the loudest guy in the bar is not usually the toughest guy in the bar but supercell kind of went out of their way to be really loud on this one and it makes me question how tough are they really going to be behind the scenes in enforcing the the technical aspects of a ban which get really complicated and expensive by the way um and then how many people are they really going to ban because really they just need enough people banned that their narr that their strong narrative makes sense and they'll affect behavioral change in the player population so you're thinking that um, Supercell is gambling and, and betting really big at this? It's a great PR move. Let's put it that way. I mean, they, they have really screwed up this game by not addressing the mod situation for so long. And, and you know, Andy, as we've talked about, one of my pet theories is here is the way that the ghosting uh, occurred, you know, through the corruption of local files um, really forced their hand on this. Um, you know, I, I think they had plans all along, but I, I do think that their target client side app altering um, to try to get both some of the, the the modding that's going on as well as try to stomp out that client side ghosting and look they 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 
there's no downside for them. I mean, look, it doesn't cost anything to post a blog post. Um, you know, it cost real money, you know, if they were going to put in some wild type warden solution that really goes out there and, you know, takes a hard scrub of the client environment and is actively looking for behavioral patterns in players, that costs money and that takes time and it takes time to get it right. You know, they're not going to get that really right coming out of the shoot. And I think people are really overestimating the depth and the complexity that they've gone to right out of the shoot. So I think that they've actually done a really good job from a corporate standpoint of, you know, putting out a very strong message, taking a really strong stance, being really loud, getting all the PR kudos on that. And then, you know, if they're banning some retarded, you know, ex-modders who were, you know, modding it for free, they're picking off the low-hanging fruit and it's reinforcing their narrative. There's no downside for them. Yeah, but, I think I think you're on to something there, Vaughn, because they they did say, and this, the word that's coming out is it seems to be ex-mod and, and i-mod is a very different thing. And I did, I sort of said offline to you guys that I'd, I'd messaged Natus directly to ask him what, you know, what was the deal with, with, uh, um, iMod and was it still working and stuff like that and basically there was a couple of interesting things came out in that 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 conversation with him and he's talked about that he he updated iMod um to make the mod safe it now goes offline by default but then he says something really interesting which I think people need to take quite seriously here is that but I don't know if they can detect something else now this is the guy who created iMod he doesn't know if Supercell can see whether you're using it or not. That's mainly because nobody knows uh, the kind of security measures that Supercell is intending to implement yet. And I think um, Supercell is implementing a concept called security through obscurity, where um, it's, it's a black box and nobody knows what's happening in there or if it's actually working or not. And they're just banking on the fact that people's fears will stop them from testing the system at all. But that's going to blow up in their face if you know, one person tests the whole thing and proves that it's actually not working. Yeah, and actually, there's this whole issue. And I, one thing that I've thought about is if, if for example, you spend a ton of money on this game and you end up getting banned, are you entitled to that money back? Well, I think that would no, be very you wouldn't expensive. be entitled to uh, you wouldn't be entitled to a refund from Supercell for violating their terms of service. I think the more interesting question here is: Is not us about to get a deluge of PayPal refund requests? Yeah, absolutely. Maybe, but then you know, Vaughn, you say that, but I, I, you know, I went through the terms of service on Supercell's website just before we we had a. We, we had this chat and it's, you know, it's pretty long and it's pretty boring. And actually the most exciting part for me was part 10.7 where they talk about acts of God and stuff, stuff of that. I, I really, that actually, made, I thought that was the best bit. But when it comes to the, the terms of service, you don't actually, they say by default, you agree to their terms of service by installing their game. But if you were installing a game on iOS or Android, I'm pretty sure that whenever I install something, I don't sign up or I don't agree to anything. Unless you research it, you don't know what you're agreeing to. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think you're you're walking a fine line there because you're you're getting into an area of legalese and legal terms and service uh, legal terms of service where I'm sure their lawyers would say you know they've got every right to do so, um, and that but you know it probably is um, you know by by running this app you are agreeing to do it and it probably passes in a in, in a court of law. But we're not talking about um, you know, bans in, in a court of law. Because when it comes to being able to deny you access to their services, they are judge, they are jury, they are executioner. It doesn't matter what the terms of service say. It alludes to third-party apps. And if they think that they can show that they've run it, that's all they need to do is satisfy their own burden of proof internally, and you're gone. And, and Andy brought up a great point about you know the the really smart thing that they did was they 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 are obfuscating you know what they're doing because you know to his point um, people are going to probe the system you know people are already starting you know there's anecdotes about that you know I'm running mods and I'm running bots and I'm doing this and I'm doing that it may work today but because that you don't know what they're doing because they're obfuscating yeah. their actions it may not work tomorrow so they've heightened the sense of risk about this and um, uh, again they actually don't need to do very much to win in the court of public opinion, even if some of their ter you know, terms and conditions wouldn't fly in a court of law. Yeah, I see what you mean, but I still think I, it would be interesting to know what they have actually done. I guess it's well, unless you're 
unless you're a creator of, of, of such software, I guess it's not really relevant. And my, it's just, I'm just curious. It's more just curiosity and it has actually got me really interested in the community to see how things are panning out. So mine, mine's just actually, my interest is just nosiness more than anything. And it has like, for example, we, we had in, in three star circus, we got infiltrated by war corps which are a you know excuse excuse the phrase here but they're they're a dirty bunch of cheaters and they're actually filthy game players <laughs> and they, they they absolutely they they infiltrated not only our clan but our line chat and they absolutely spammed the heck of out of us and what they're what they intended to do was infiltrate the clan and Vaughn, i don't know if you knew this but they they, they uh, this came out uh, within the last 12 hours to me that they wanted to infiltrate our clan they wanted to ghost in a war to get the whole clan banned. That was the goal. And, uh, you know, it's just dirty. It's a dirty way to play. I don't understand what these people get out of the game. So, you know, there's there's different levels of cheaters out there and different levels of filth that goes on. But there's certainly some people that are just darn right filthy and they want to ruin the game for everybody. And, you know, I don't know what the motivation in that is. But, uh, yeah, well, I mean... <laughs> you guys you guys know who I'm talking about, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I think. So I think we should name and shame. We had Hard Hacker, uh, Hard Hacker, and we had uh, another mm-hmm. couple of guys from uh, War Corps. One of them was Shikar Garg, who was, you know, he's a filthy player in the community and, and he's, he's well known. But I think really Supercell needs to be taking a look at these guys who, you know, I think, yeah, great. Get on with mod stuff. Get on with X mod stuff. If you're gonna, if you're gonna get the people doing it, do it. But there's, there's actually a real dirty side to Clash of Clans as well. Uh, have you guys experienced this firsthand? Except for the other day. Oh yeah, I have definitely. I mean, I can't even tell you the amount of line chats that I've been in that have been nuked by these people. And what about in game <laughs> stuff? Have you guys experienced it? I mean, we, we had that. Um, Persian clan we played the other day and they actively ghosted and you guys watched it. Have you have you experienced stuff like that before? Um, I can't say for the others, but when we were in Melbourne, um, we frequently get matched up against a few modding clans. And this was before um, Supercell stopped ghosting in its original form where you could just turn off your router or turn on the, your airplane mode um, to ghost. And we saw quite a number of attacks like that. Right, okay, so... We talked about how the game is probably going to change, but I've noticed quite a lot of people quitting. You guys, I'm sure you've probably seen some stuff come through. What do you think about those people that have quit and publicly quit? I think it's interesting the convenient timing that a bunch of people are having a lot of school and work and life issues that um, just as soon as the band hammer gets shown to the player population, a lot of people are finding a lot of convenient excuses um, for, you know, begging off of the game uh, versus, you know, continuing to show their credentials as someone who is actually skilled in the game. I, I think the, the what is his name, Operation Wheat uh, guy, the letter that's been circulating about his resignation from One Hive, uh, was very interesting as well. Um, you know, he would some he would be someone I would invite on this show to talk about. Um, you know, what was it like to be a closet modder in One Hive? Um, you know, did you did you feel you know like there were crosswinds inside of you? You know, knowing that you were uh, closet modding inside that group, and and I'd like to understand you know what went into writing that letter. Um, you know that he posted online because it definitely seemed. Um, you know, like he was very complimentary and respectful towards One Hive, but then uh, basically undermined their entire mission and their credibility by, um, you know, putting all the spotlight on himself and saying, "Oh yeah, I was I was closet modding for the last nine months." And I, I thought that was an interesting way to break up. And I think that um, you know now that seventy two hours have passed, I'd be curious to know if he'd uh, take anything back or do that differently. I think um, for a lot of people, this final overture by Supercell to ban, ban motors is probably the last straw on top of the Town Hall 11 updates and the Witch nerf and probably the Bowler nerf coming up soon and the Vox nerf. So a lot of people are taking this opportunity to basically make a final name for themselves and going out with a bang, so to say. I mean, I think it's really interesting the difference between like the two types of people using the mod software. Like I'm referencing again that video we were talking about earlier where Koopa was talking about how he thinks probably a lot of the people that are modding are going to be just so relieved 
that they don't have that pressure anymore and that it's going to make like playing the game fun for them again that they can you know not have to resort to spending hours and hours and hours like trying to crack a base and like make sure that they get that three star that they can just go up leisurely try to plan an attack and like not worry if it's not 100 percent and the difference between those that experience and the experience of someone who is in a clan that is saying we don't want you to use this this is absolutely against like what everything we go for and then for them to be doing it in secret like it's so like such a different experience like mindset of somebody who's doing it kind of like for the clan, like for the team, and then somebody who's doing it for against the team. I think that's a really interesting polarization. And I had a question too. I think Steve brought up a, a comment on the last podcast that we all kind of let go, and I actually had to follow up around uh, back with him and ask him what he meant on that. But he was actually saying that there are clans where you join. You're not only expected to mod into three star, you're actually expected to hand over your account credentials to the account leader who will make your attacks for you. I mean, that blew my mind is, you know, some of the utter lunacy and the extents of the lunacy that some of this went to. I, I, question for the group, Groot and, you know, Blondie and Andy, have you guys ever heard of clans like that? Do you have any experience with that? And, and have you been able to see that firsthand? I have, yeah. It's 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 a common thing, you know. It it happens in the in the top war uh, war community, and you. It's yeah. It's one of those things. It's just accepted the way it is. There's there's better scripters. There's better hitters. There's better modders, and you know the the expectation is the six star war, nothing less. And you you know the pressure off that is immense. I mean, who who can who can perform like that? You know, it's like uh, it's it's off the chart. So, but there is guys that have ways and means to get six star war every time. Well, they did have, and that's who you're expected to hand your accounts to. Now, there's massive massive risks with this because not only does it breach Supercell's terms and conditions, and it's a real easy one for them to prove because the U D I D changes every time that logs on so they can see what country you log on from they can see what device you use frequently um and it's 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 really easy to trace whether a device has been used or or a village has been used on a number of devices so that's quite an easy one for them to to go with but also the risk of your account then being spammed or your gems being spent i mean i've had it before where i have shared my account and i'm I'm kind of admitting a breach of terms here but this is this is historic um where i've i've shared my village and the most offensive thing somebody did was sell my pirate flag which i paid 500 gems for and i almost cried Mm. so uh, since then i changed everything exactly yeah so i changed everything and it wasn't such a biggie but i changed everything and i I decided from then on that's it i'm i don't like this yeah that that attack that somebody else did on my account of great but it wasn't me and that's not who i was and that's not who i am i also i also like you know, I don't know about you guys, but I think that my village and the way I play the game now, and a lot of it is spam and messing around and stuff like that, but I think it actually reflects some of my personality. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. So your village should not only be unique to you, but it should be an expression of who you are, and in some ways in the way you attack, and as as you guys will have seen in my, my attacks, it's basically spam everything down. Well, that's kind of what my life's like. <laughs> I, don't, I, I, I don't know what to read from Vaughn's attacks. <laughs> I can only dream to be as good as you, Groot. <laughs> yeah, whatever, you nine hot, Town Hall 9 legend. Um, so yeah, there's there's that, and so the the question you asked was how have we? I've 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 definitely experienced it, and I I wouldn't go back to it. I'm I'm personally I'm done with it, and the pressure of trying to get that massive war win or six star this, and I, it's I just can't do it. I don't have the time to do it. I don't like it. I like being able to jump on, have a bit of fun, have a have a laugh, and you know, plan an attack, maybe using our chats and stuff like that, and and go for it. What about everybody else? Vaughn asked a good question about has anybody else experienced it? What are you guys, Blondie, Grace, anything? I mean, I have seen people share accounts before in clans that I've been in, but it hasn't been for the purpose of like like hitting for them for a war. It's been more like, hey, like, I don't know if I'm going to have time. So could you like, you know, take care of this for me? Not more about like you're better than I am. So can you do it? You know, it's more like a convenience thing, but I know that it does go on. But I'm pretty sure, though, I've seen on. I'm not going. I'm not going to 
name and account here but our, our name a clan because I, I this I might just be making this up but I'm pretty sure that I've watched something on YouTube of a famous clan talking about account sharing somebody else did this attack or that was somebody else and they're a well-known fair play clan is, is that ringing home with anybody or am I just blowing smoke here well, the only clan that I've heard of that does things like that is in the dark and they are not an a fair play clan so I don't know any other maybe Blondie does I mean not that I know of I'm sure that it happens though yeah, but I think generally people just share accounts because they can't um, make the time to make the attack. Uh, I've never heard of people getting so pressured to perform that they would relinquish their, their account to somebody else to make the attack for them. I've definitely well, heard of it happening. I've heard, I've heard actually recently somebody, I mean, I can't remember where I heard this, so I mean, it's all hearsay, but I heard a story about some clan releasing, somebody from the clan releasing all the account information and passwords from all of the people that had been account sharing in the clan. So, you know, I mean, if you're in possession of that much information from everybody from the clan, that's, you know, pretty, pretty big power. You can really mess with a lot of people's stuff that way. Very you know, what Steve was specifically alluding to last time was that there was an expectation from the clan to the individuals that if you're going to come here, you're going to hand over your account credentials and we will, at our discretion, if it's a tight war, we'll, we'll decide who's going to make the attack. Will it be me, the leader, who, you know, or, or will it be somebody else that's in a clan? Or are we going to allow you to make your own attack on your own village? To me, that, that is so far diluted in the thinking and that desire to win at all costs that, number one, I, I think, you know, is, is what's what's crazier in that situation, making the request or complying with the request? Because to me, I think there's all kinds of crazy people with crazy ideas out there, but um, they're going to need some suckers to go along with it if it's going to gain any traction. And this, this idea of relinquishing your account credential to somebody um, so they could take your account and uh, make the attacks for you, they're not valuing your base, they're not valuing your personality, they're not valuing your skills. Um, you're just bringing them a, 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 a corpse that they can reanimate, you know, and do what, you know, whatever they want to, to serve their own ends. And to me, that's just, that type of thinking is just so far off the grid. It's not funny. Yeah. And it's almost, I, I agree with you there, but it's, I kind of, it's, I was picturing some stuff in my head there, right? And this is, this is just how my brain works that actually it's like somebody else coming into your room and wearing your clothes for a couple of hours and going out and pretending to be you <laughs> or going into your office dressed as you. Saying I'm, I this this is me for the day. Oh look, I'm performing really well, and then you you, you go back to normal sort of thing. There's that we're, whole. We're, so we can oh. order one of those guys. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I, I, I I just kind of it's 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 a weird thing because actually you're kind of conning yourself in many ways if you think that it's going to elevate your profile or whatever. And it's one of the things you mentioned Vaughn there about the handing over to account leaders um, and stuff like that. There's two different types of leader in the game and there's a clan leader, which normally you'll find they're not the best hitters, but they're very, very good with people and they're very good at organizing clans. But when it comes to the top war clans, those guys are the same. They're just very good at organizing clans, organizing wars, balancing weights and stuff like that. Not necessarily good hitters and they're not the guys who do the modding. Does that make sense? So there's yeah. a whole there's a whole team of other people behind it. And you know, this they're so well organized these things that it's it's actually scary. And when you see how you know, efficient some of these people used to run it. I mean, this, 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 if they, if Supercell are in a position to completely wipe out modding, it is a massive, massive game changer where people should be able to enjoy the game a bit more, I think. Yeah, and look, Andy can shed some more light on this from his IT background, but really, there's not the idea of silver bullet in security, and and you know, I'm going to deploy one thing that's going to fix everything is is a big misconception out there in the IT world, and it's really, it's going to take you know eventually a layered approach or really a defense in depth approach where it's you're going to have to look at where can the exploits occur throughout every layer of the model. So really you've got the app side, you've got the communication side, you've got the server side, you've got the GUI side, you know, you've got all these different layers that comprise an application. And if you're really going to implement effective security, you're going to have to address all of those layers because simply doing one thing is not going to go catch everybody. And this is what I'm really inter interested to see is what is Supercell's real commitment here? Are they in it for the PR and, but actually trying to get away with as little as possible, you know, to, to not have to spend that money uh, and make, 
make this more of a of a psyops type um, you know ban uh, threat, or are they really going to spend the money and make the commitment? Something like um, like Wow did with Warden that they're really going to. Uh, make this an integral part of the game and really dissuade people not only through the threats of banning but actually follow throughing it up uh, following it through uh, with the ban so that no matter how creative the player population gets if they cheat they're going to get caught so i'm I'm a little curious on how far they're eventually going to go with this and I don't you know I, I think that they're going for low-hanging fruit the fact that they're going for the unpaid reverse engineered x mod app tends to tell me th- this is their first step, and they're going after the low-hanging fruit first. Now, how far they go with that, still to be seen. Yeah, it's an interesting point, and one one thing I, I I'm thinking about in this, and just I'm thinking about Nadis, who is the creator of iMod, and I would love to get him on, and I'd love to sit and chat with him. I I think he'd be a really interesting guy to speak with. Whether I'd love to know. I know his motivation was probably originally to try and make some money. Maybe he's trying to pay fees. I'm guessing, right? I don't know what you've got. Uh, okay, I'm going to throw it out first of all. What do you think he looks like? <laughs> <laughs> okay, you, 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 everybody, everybody in here right now must have a picture of what he looks like. Come on, guys, what does he look like? I think he should be um, ruggedly handsome <laughs> with a uh, five o'clock um, shadow. Right. I think he's going to be Boring. an Indonesian answer to Kim.com. Um, <laughs> that he is then sitting in his bunker with his army of programmers. He's paying them 12 cents an hour to bang out code on uh, the right way to do a four-finger barb drop. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> I think he looks like he hasn't seen the sun in a really long time. Yeah, so he's going to be like an albino. An albino. He, he's <laughs> definitely going to be from Asia somewhere, I think. Is that fair? Yeah, I think so. And um, I, I kind of, I had a, I had a slightly different, and maybe, I maybe, I'm just a lot softer than you guys, and maybe I care about people more than you guys. <laughs> but I pictured, I'm, I'm, I'm kidding, by the way. I pictured this guy that's maybe a student who's trying to pay some tuition fees or make some money on the side that's tax free, and he can do some stuff with that. And he's just a young guy who's just trying to make some money. That that that's what I think. So he's basically the technical equivalent of the stripper with the heart of gold, who's just stripping to put him put herself through college, just for Ex- books and tuition. Yeah, yeah, I, I think so. I think so. Or or he could be like a single dad trying to bring up, you know, child on his own, or he might have a pretty cat, you know. <laughs> I mean, it's endless. But what he looks like, he's definitely got glasses. He's definitely about five foot three, and he's <laughs> probably sounds like I know him, right? It sounds like that's I actually know this guy. That's just, that's very accurate. But um, yes. I, I think I didn't I think, know we had moved into the alcohol friendly p- part of the podcast now here <laughs> yes. at, at Drunk at the Circus in the in Groot's Treehouse. <laughs> what do you mean? It's not always that way. Oh, okay. It's only twenty to eleven here. I'm not drunk yet. Yet. Well, it's two forty in the morning here. I'm definitely have been drinking. That's not good. That's not good. I'd be so asleep. But anyway, so I'm going to throw that invitation out there that I'd love to get Nadis on here. I've thrown an invitation out to him. I have messaged him and said, look, do you want to chat and give some guys some feedback, some guys and girls? I keep saying guys. And when I say guys, I, don't, I mean, I, that's, that's by gender. Is by gender a word? No. Yeah, Just, yeah. Look, okay. So I'm, not, I'm not easily offended. You're fine. Many, many genders of, of folk. So it covers... I want him to come and speak to people and and really throw it out there and, and see what he thinks. I mean, what do you guys think of Natus? I know we've we're kinda having a bit of joke about what he looks like, but what do you what do you think of the stuff that he does and you know? Let's talk about I don't it. think he's to blame. Um I think he's just providing a service that is you know, being looked at, uh, being being needed at the moment. And I think um he is just you know, providing that service. It's not actively trying to subvert the game or anything like that. Yeah, I look at it along the lines of Andy in a very non-judgmental way in that he, he you're right, you got to look at this in terms of supply and demand. There, there are people, and, I, and on the last podcast, I referenced uh, Clash of Clans as a game of puzzles. And it really is to me, in what I think is be- beautiful about the game, 
um, and yes, I said beautiful in Clash of Clans, is that you know, you've got a set number of pieces that are out there and you know, a set universe of pieces. And you've got you know, these millions and millions of players who are all rearranging those pieces to create different puzzles that they then throw at you and it's up to you to crack them. And, and some people are going to want to be able to solve that puzzle. Now, whether that's for their need to be, you know, feel like they're good at the game or they're addressing some psychological need, you know, for whatever reason, they need to feel good at the game and perhaps better than they really are. And I think that in a very non-judgmental way, um, Nottis was trying to solve a problem. He was trying to address the needs of people who wanted a leg up. And I, and I say that again, you know, not casting aspersion on those people, but you know, there was, there was a black market need for, for features and that allowed people to get a leg up. And, and to me, I've always said, you know, how, how good can you really feel about your, yourself, um, when you're modding, it would be the, you know, analogous to uh, starting a game of Scrabble with someone and your opening, mo your opening move is to bust out the dictionary and you're going to play the entire game with the dictionary in your lap. You know, <laughs> do, not do you that not, hard do you, to do people solve. Still read? Well, I, I hear that people read, you know, these things called books, but, um, you know, but yeah. to me, I mean, how good are you really at that if that's your move? And how good can you really feel about yourself if you're going to play Scrabble with the dictionary in your lap and you're going to... Um, you know, claim victory over someone who doesn't have that equal benefit. And I actually have a, you know, we touched on earlier that letter that went out from the, the clan that's disbanding. They actually said, that, you know, they actually wanted to take on other modding clans. And I thought that was a, a needed mission because, you know, it gets into that meta game that I think they're misusing that term. But at the end of the day, they wanted to figure out who's the best at the game on their terms. And, you know, are they right? Are they wrong? You know, <clears throat> You know, they're wrong according to the term of service, but they were trying to define it for themselves. Um, and the same way that Modest, uh, Nottis was trying to fulfill a need out there. And, you know, he monetized that. He was a businessman at heart. He's a tech guy at heart. He probably loves the technology. He loves the money. Uh, he probably doesn't like the attention right now, um, you know, with a, you know, getting a you know, thousand Twitter DMs and a thousand emails. And if I were him, I would definitely take you up on the opportunity to come on to a true broadcast scenario. And, you know, in one, you know, 30 minute conversation to be addressed to probably tens or thousands or hundreds of thousands or even millions of people are out there that would love to hear what he's got to say right now. I think, I think he'd be a really interesting guy. You know, he's got to be, He's going to be really switched on to the technology world, and he's going to get it. But yeah, I just think I think it'd be great if he did. If he just said, "Yeah, all right, I'll, I'll have a chat." I think he'll provide a very good um, technical perspective into how how Supercell could actually do these things like this. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I've I thought of a I thought of a, a couple of ideas on how I actually think half the problem is that Supercell, the way the game's designed, has almost Again, this isn't just a blame thing, but there was an opportunity where people wanted to play the game more and they couldn't. And and I, I think that the modding side of it actually gave people an opportunity to play a game non-stop. As I said last time, that I wonder was Supercell partly the cause and the design of the game partly the cause, right? So I don't know if I made that clear. So what, what I'm trying to say is that you got to pay to play the game, really, if you want to play it non-stop. Now, I'm going to throw out a couple of ideas here as a solution. If uh, now that Vaughn is the CEO of Supercell, I'm going to throw these ideas out to you and see what you think. So instead of buying time, so you're going to buy, spend 10 gems and a shield or some other nonsense, a guard, so you can play for a bit longer. How about you pay 100 gems for 24 hours and in multiplayer, you get a plus 10 on your heroes? I'd quit the game. Why? Because it's, it's, <laughs> it's inherently creating... Well, look, because you're now... You are paying for an unlevel playing field that people can only achieve if they pay as well. And so, you know, you can say that people are paying for performance through botting and modding, and that's true, and that's why people, that's why people are so pissed off right now at, at the modding. But at the end of the day, you know, the, the heroes and the troops... And everything that's available to one player is available to the other player. So it's, the, you know, the puzzle creator and the puzzle attacker are, in, are in inherently on the same uh, playing field. Now, if you're going to say this person gets an advantage for 24 hours and gets level 50 heroes instead of level 40 heroes, and I'm going to need to pay money just to match uh, this, this person with, you know, for the level 50 heroes to have a chance in this war. No, I'm out. I'm out. No, 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 not clan war. It doesn't apply to clan war, just multiplayer. 
So, so for it example, you, you, get, you, you could get a, yeah, so for farming and stuff like that. So you could basically get a plus one, say if you had a your Town Hall 9, you could experience, so even for two or three hours, you could experience a level six wizard for two or three hours and you pay, you know, 20 gems for that. Is that um, something that was said? I think what would be even like more powerful than that is if you just, there was a mode that you could play where you can just spar with other people in your clan. I mean, they have that in Clash Ooh, like Royale. That. You can sit in Clash Royale and play and play and play. You know, you don't keep gaining resources. You know, once you have your little slots filled with the chests, you can't get any more. But you can still play. You can still, like, you know, open up an attack with people that are in your clan. I think they should just do that. Like, why can't you just attack with people in your clan and play against each other? As much as you want, it doesn't mean you're gaining more resources. Like, that's still, you know, that's still part of the timing system that they already have in place. But you can practice on each other and you can still, like, be actively playing the game. I think that's good, but the, the only issue you would have there, I, I, okay, thinking about what you just said, how about you create a, you're allowed to create one training village a day this would stop then building each base in a war, for example. One right. training base a day for people just to hit nonstop with whatever armies they want. Now, I'm sure they could figure out the details to keep it from being, you know, a training ground for you to practice on trying to beat a base. I'm sure they could put something in place to prevent that from happening. And I, I, I kinda, think, I think sorry, Blondie was really on to it there with the idea of um, being able to harden each other's bases in, in a clan. Because I think to me, the first time it, that, you know, the idea of, of modding or the need for modding crossed my mind was, you know, um, you know, looking at someone else's base and, you know, them asking questions, hey, how would you attack this? What would you do this? And it would be so much better to be able to show them, you know, here's how I would attack your base, and so they could see a replay of it. I, I think if that were to even cost a gem, let's say, to to launch a simulated attack on another person's base, um, it would be worth the money, and it would be worth the investment to um, to be able to harden your bases for your clanmates in that in that way. I think you could easily prevent that from being exploited. I think that's the big risk, and then you could only do it on non war days. You know, when you weren't and in, 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 it wasn't prep day, it wasn't war day, it was an idle day. You know, to be able to launch, you know, simulated attacks on another base. When you right. build your base for war and then, you know, you're in prep day, but then once it turns to war day, then your base can't change. It could be the same type of thing where, you know, once you go into prep day, whatever have you, you have your base set up that you're, you know, using to practice with your people in your clan, it's locked in and then you can only change it again, you know, when your war is over. Yeah. So would you would you would you go along the lines of having one base per, say, one base per village per twenty four hours that you could have have set up as a as a training village? Yeah, that would be fun too. Just you know that you could practice against it. I also think it'd be cool to have like a corral, you know, of troops that you could everybody in the team could donate to. That if somebody needed war troops and and everybody's like sleeping, they could just go like take them, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You know, last time we talked about this idea of botting driving innovation. And I think that if I'm the CEO of Supercell right now, I'm not trying to, you know, first of all, I'm trying to ban uh, the mods. Uh, my second course of action would be I would steal from them and I would steal their functionality that they brought uh, to the table that provided both user convenience uh, as well as then, you know, the attractiveness of modding, but I would do it in a way that didn't disadvantage the player population. And then I look at how I could monetize it. I, you know, I think that um, that's the best way they could drive the Natus and the, the X mod crowd out of business mm -hmm. is to put in responsible features that actually remove the incentive and the attractiveness of modding in the first place. Yeah, I think it's great. And if you look at, I guess it's the same as jailbreaking and an Apple device, isn't it? Where if you look at the next iOS update, they always integrate something from a, a jailbroken device. So a feature or something that really worked well or, you know, the stuff that we look at on our on our devices now, has a, most of it's come from a jailbreak. That's a, that's a great analogy because at the same time they're putting in countermeasures to prevent people from jailbreaking and they're trying to defeat the jailbreaking, they're stealing from them and monetizing it in a corporate way. So I, I'm all for that idea. And if I'm Supercell, you know, I think I'm putting in things like uh, quick account switching, you know, to be able to say, I've got three bases, I'm going to load them up here and be able to switch back and forth between one or the other. Um, you know, because I, you know, there are some people out there, you know, <clears throat> you don't know if it's true or not, but they say, hey, I, I leave the mod installed because it allows 
allows me to switch back and forth between the accounts easily. Well, you know what? Hard to argue with that when, you know, if you're going to donate your troop, you know, from one account to the other, you have to go into Game Center and log in and log out. It's a pain in the butt to do it that way. So, you know, I think in just the same way Apple steals from the jailbreaking community, I think Super Shelf should be stealing from the mod community. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it could be. And actually, they could be learning so much from this and they could be making this game absolutely epic. And there's no reason why Clash of Clans should be in that phase where everybody's talking about. I mean, the last update was pretty awful. I mean, the bowler, I made one by accident <laughs> the other day and I deleted it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> he's that bad. I mean, what is the point of this blue thing? And I just think that there's a real opportunity here, isn't there, Vaughn? You're, you're bang on the money there where they can make this game absolutely epic again and better than it has been and progress it rather than saying right going to come out we're going to fight modern but you know what we're going to do we're not just going to fight modern we're going to make this game unbelievable and we're going to take half of those ideas the ones that aren't aren't deemed as cheating and the ones that will make you enjoy the game better and integrate it into the game how optimistic you never know now that vaughn's the ceo it. I know, You're hired. I'm optimistic. I'm so optimistic. It's making and me And Blondie's doing like, PR. Right? Mm, love it. It's good it could me. happen, right? It could happen. You just don't know. And I mean, I've got, what, thanks for all the new subscriptions to the YouTube channel. I've got 261. So, Supercell are bound to hear this. <laughs> 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 you know, they'll be all over this thinking, yeah, let's, let's take, these guys are right. These guys are right. But, you know, I, I think... I, I, I don't know. There's a possibility, right? There's, there's definitely scope for change, and there's no such thing as bad PR. True. Oh, there's bad PR. Yeah, but it's always good PR eventually, right? Unless you're Charlie Sheen. <laughs> Hi. 